Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hey, have you ever thought to yourself that you would love to take some individual sheets of paper? And um, I get asked this question all the time. Can we take some individual sheets of paper and somehow turn them into a journal without folding them, but somehow attach them all together at one side so we can use the whole sheet? Because sometimes maybe we want a whole sheet of paper to write on or to do artwork on, to draw on, to paint on, something like that. Yes, and here's an easy way to do it. Okay. Um, we are going to use a, um, a spin-off of a video I did uh, with a similar um, uptick to this, but I'm going to show you before it was done just with manila envelopes, manila um, file folders, but this time we're going to use single pages and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So, uh, and I'm also going to show you some ways to sew and no sew it. So hopefully all will go well. All right, so here is prototype. Let's take a look at prototype. So basically we have a fabric spine. Okay, and I forgot, I, I forgot, I didn't put the back cover on, but you would do the same thing we're gonna do for the back cover. I just wanted to show you guys, I was so excited. And uh, this particular one, I used a um, digi print of mine from um, Diaries. It's an old vintage diary page. And I just used some black magic marker to make some uh, lines on here. And I stamped the word classified on the side. And it, it was just a very ba basic, simple project, lots of fun, anybody can do this. And you could put any picture you want on the front or leave it blank. I just made some very basic, simple uh, pockets here. Um, these come from my digi kits as well. This, these are from handwritten letters. And uh, these, I believe, are either from envelopes lost in, uh, in time or uh, one of the older vintage digital kits. But I will put all links down below. But um, this is what they look like. I just used a... Um, collection of different types of papers, coffee dyed papers, avocado dyed papers, um, just fun things, different kinds of papers, different things for people to explore and to write on, make their own. Here we go into the second journal or second signature. Also of similar um, yet different papers. You can use all the same paper. They don't have to be coffee dyed. They could just be regular copy paper. Um, it could be um, a variety of different kinds of papers. And let's say, for example, you want to put a uh, piece of music paper in there because you think that's really pretty but you're thinking huh but nobody can write on that but what you can do if nobody can write on that you can take a um just grabbing an example piece here uh not a good example but um oh here here's a good example you can take a piece of lined paper any kind of lined paper and you could ink around it, um, maybe cut this off, cut this off, and um, ink around the edges and glue it onto the page that has stuff on it. And that gives a writing space that has a frame, which is kind of cool. So there's an option for you. I have a lot of tips and tricks on different fun ways to, to use these. So hang on tight. And uh, so what you want to do, first of all, is decide how big your book is going to be. If you're going to go with a, a traditional 8.5 by 11 uh, size piece of paper, then maybe you want your covers to be nine, um, actually, um, maybe 11 and a quarter or 11 and eighth by eight and three quarters or just a little bigger than eight and a half, just so it, it sits inside of your, your cover. Uh, so this is the, going into the third signature now, just to give you some ideas. Okay, so, and, and each um, is very easy to write on any of these pages. Everything is very flat. Very easy, um, opens well, and uh, great for projects, all sorts of things. Uh, recipe book, um, just a million and one ideas. So how to get a bunch of single thin pages together um, easily. Well, the first most, uh, the easiest way is to sew them together. So I took a bunch of pages that were all just different kinds of papers and I just straight stitched down the edge here. Okay. So I went to my sewing machine and I just did a number one stitch and went all the way down the side. And for this example, um, in the prototype, I had three signatures. This one, I just have two because that's what I have assembled. Um, hang on. Okay, so let's assemble one signature together. I have two already done, let's do one together. The most important thing is the side that's going to be your spine. You really want all the pages to be at the same, uh, all the way together down there. So do a bunch of these, a bunch of those, do it again, do it again, and then double check. Make sure there's no oddball hanging out on his own inside there, and then clip them at the top. A little paper clip or you can use a clamp doesn't matter and then we're gonna sew this so I'll bring old sewing machine over okay let me move the camera hold on 
Okay, and now we are going to sew. So this is the right way of my paper, but as you can see, if I, tr I tr oh, if I try and sew it like that, I'm going to run into this. Now I could I could do that, and that would be fine because the paper is easy to bend. But if you have a problem with it, just turn your paper around, and then the big end sticks out here, and it's no big deal. Okay, so let's just sew it. I'm using a number one, which is a straight stitch on my machine, and I'm making the stitches longer because they don't have to be as close together for paper, and it's about um, it's easier on your machine. Go slow at first to see what your machine will tolerate. My machine can easily tolerate 12 pages sewn together. I can do up to 15. It, it starts getting mad at me at 15. If I try 20, I can actually do 20, but it hates me the entire time. You know what I mean? So get know your machine and um, it's an expensive quilting machine. You may not want to do this or you may have ways around that. Um, I'm using a universal needle and I'm going slow and I'm listening to my machine and here we go. So I'm approximately one eighth to one quarter inch in. Okay. Oh, I'm on a zigzag stitch for some reason, which is not the right stitch. Okay, now I'm on a one. Okay, and I'm gonna back stitch a little bit just to lock the papers in, or the, the stitches in. And then when I get a little confidence up and I feel like my machine is going okay, I go a little faster, but it is, you know, a chunk of uh, material or uh, substance to go through. So, you know, just be nice with your machine. Your machine will be nice with you. Life is good. Talk to it nicely. It's kind of like a plant. Breathe on it. <laughs> and then just backstitch. It doesn't take long at all to do this one little row of straight stitch. You come off, turn your wheel up, get release the needle, and then cut your um, strings off. Mine has a little string cutter on the end there, but you can just use scissors like, like this old-fashioned method, which works great. Okay. Yay! Now I'm going to go ahead, I cut out two pieces of, um, this is hanging file, okay, and it looks like, do I have another piece exactly like that? I have another piece similar to it, something like this. Uh, these are just like thicker file folder thingies I got at the thrift store, but you could use a manila folder, um, maybe double up on it, glue it together, and uh, that would give you a nice cover as well. And um, you can also use the thicker scrapbook paper if you have the front and back. Um, it doesn't have to be front and back decorated, but often it is if it's the thicker cardstock style. And uh, But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach our cover to... Which ones I want? The front the back. Okay. Um, this by sewing it on. I could have done it um, in one felt swoop, but I just I wanted to uh, just see how my machine, because if, if you have never done this before, you want to see how your machine handles sewing. 12 things together. Okay, so now we're going to sew this. Would probably be best. This is all anchored, so it doesn't need any paper clips anymore, but it would probably be a good idea for you to... Oop, let me back up. Nope, let me back up. Boop. Okay, so that I want to... This is the way it's going to go. I want this to be right to the edge like we did before. Straight up and down. Okay, and then I'm going to clip to the top and clip to the bottom. And then we're going to sew this. Now this I am going to turn around because this doesn't bend, so that's not going to work well that way. I'm going to turn, rotate it, and come here, make sure my tails are back there. And then I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better. Whoop, no, zoom in so you can see a little better. There you go. I'm going to come in here and about um, an eighth to a quarter of an inch in. Pull my foot over so I can sew. And I'm going to do the number one st straight stitch again. Oh, and my thread came out. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. My I, uh, my thread came out. So this time I'm going to be a smarter sewer. I'm going to hold on to the tails. I don't know if you can see that, but the two tails are here. I'm just going to hold on to those. You can toss them off the back too. And I'm going to sew again. Going slow. Just a little thicker. Do a little back stitch. One or two is fine. And then carry on forward. Slowly working everything through. Maybe it's like a little thicker, you know. There, not so bad there. I'm not going too fast because I want my machine to deal with this. Oh, I did. I sped up, didn't I? Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, you can also use a uh, denim needle or a leather needle to do this. Okay. And you can help your machine a little bit when it. You can use the side uh, wheel to turn it a little bit to get it to sew through this. Almost home free. Okay, now we're 
or no one were agreed to follow in line with the process. The machine seems to be happier now. Maybe I was running into the pre-sewn thread line, that kind of thing. Now slow down near the edge, do a couple of back stitches, and then you're off and running. Okay. Okay. There. Whoop. There. Okay, so now we have this. Okay, that's great. So everything is sewn together to the cover. We have that. All right, and every page will lay, lay nice and flat. Very nice, right? Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing um, for the, uh, actually we're not gonna do the middle signature because there's no cover that goes on that. So let's just put that one aside. Actually, let's make this the middle one since it's got a, a thing. And this will be the back side. This is the back of the back. Okay, let me just rearrange this so we can all see what we're talking about. Um, so this is my front with the cover. This is my very back. And this is gonna be my middle. Okay, so let's work with the very back. We're gonna put the back cover on. So the back cover, let's see, this is gonna go maybe on the inside. And we can, we can always cover that up or leave it as is. Um, all right, that we like that. Let's do that. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Um, line it up all nicey nice. Clip it down and sew it. All right. And here we go. The same approach, turning it around because it won't fit because it's got the hard cover. And maybe I want to sew on the cover side so I have my brown thread on the outside. So remember, whatever thread you sew on top is the thread you have up high on your um, sewing machine. And the thread you have down below in your bobbin is going to be on the back side. Okay. Mine do not match. Mine. Upper one is brown. Two, three, four. Maybe back it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh it's gonna be fighting me today. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the hand wheel a little bit to help it through some rough spots. Okay. Okay, it might give me an error. It might happen. Probably shouldn't do this. Oh, nope, didn't get an error yet. Okay, it must be it must be a little thicker. Maybe I have one more piece of paper or something like like I said, you gotta get to know your your machine. And then sometimes it'll just release and go. Whoop, if it gets stuck, just help it a little bit. Go slow. Oh, okay. okay. And we're almost there. Hope you can see this. Back stitching, and we're off. Okay. Yay! I know it sounded painful, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, but it's it's working. It's working. Okay. Um, let's do a little nipperoo on the strings. Doop. Doop. All right, so the basic um, hard part is done. We have our covers on, okay. Now let's just go ahead and assemble. And what I thought I would use to assemble is, uh, let me see if I have some longer yeah, material. Okay, so um, I think this is kind of cool. This is a thin cotton muslin. And what I wanna do is I wanna cut three long pieces as long as the um, thing, the height of my journal, uh, but about three inches wide. So let's figure out where three inches wide is. Three inches, whoop. Three inches is a good measure. Oh, I can't believe we're measuring. And then another three inches. Okay, so we need at least three. So I might have to go looking elsewhere for a different piece of material. It's okay, we like variety though, right? Tearing is the easiest way to do that without having to use the rolling fabric thingy. Um, so we have these. And digging, hang on. Okay, I seem to have this pretty piece of um, map material. So let's just trim this. And you can buy this stuff on Amazon, quilting squares, quilting fabric in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And it's nice because it, a lot of it is pre-cut. And uh, let me tell you how easy this is and I can't tear it. Okay, yes, I was able to tear. Um, so, there we go. And I think I'm going to put this on the outside. Let's see how long we these need to be. Let's make them all the same length. I don't know if you can. My husband is cooking in the kitchen. And what are you making, honey? You're making ratatouille? Yep. Okay. That was an affirmative, making ratatouille. This is a well-lived in household and, and, and there's action all the time. So do expect noises uh, from other beings in here with me. I do not live in an isolation chamber. They are here with me and they always seem to find a way back in. <laughs> 
So, uh, <laughs> um, that's the way it goes. Okay, so do, can we zoom? Is it too close? Yeah, there we go. Okay, then maybe that's better. Let me get you up and over a little so you can see. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take some glue. I actually don't need these clips on here anymore. This is my back. Okay, let's work from the back to the front. doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to put one of these on the front. Now, this is the same process we did before. Um, the only difference is we're doing a bunch of single thin papers as opposed to just a piece of manila folder in the middle of each of these little material sandwiches um, to create a book-like structure. And uh, here we go. All right, so I'm going to use... Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to use... Uh, what am I going to use? I'm going to use... Um, you who stick because it's not that sticky. I just want something to adhere my um, fabric to here. You can use clips as well, uh, but just a little something to tack it. All right. And then when you place the first one, you want to go just to cover your seams and maybe a half an inch on your page is good. Okay. Okay. And uh, hang on. Hang on. Okay. About a half an inch on, turn it over. Get rid of all oh, the extraneous things that have somehow joined the project. And um, then do the same thing on the back. Now what you're going to do is you're going to glue it close to the edge. Okay. And you're going to leave a tube or a tunnel. So you're not going to do it tight. You're going to leave. You're only going to put about half an inch on. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Very nice. Okay. So now... We're going to let that dry. Now, to be totally secure, if you didn't use, if you used a regular manila folder and not something as thick as this, you could run down here again with the sewing machine. I'm not going to do that with mine because it was really choking on the 12 pages plus that. So I'm just going to leave that glued. And I'm thinking that's going to be a-okay. All right. And uh, okay, so the next one is the middle one. And the middle one is here. Basically going to do the same process. Can you see? Okay. Um, run this down here. Okay. Oh, what I wanted to tell you, like how to do this without sewing. Um, okay. What you can do without sewing is staple, 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 staple. Now don't go back and run over it again with your sewing machine because you will run through a staple and that's bad for your needle. It can break it. So don't do that. But um, so you can, as an alternative, you can just come in and staple, 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 staple. Okay. And if we have time at the end, maybe I'll, I'll demonstrate that too. Cause I think, um, I'll, you know, showing is better than just explaining. Okay, here we go. How'd that get so long? I thought I cut one. Yes, I did. Okay. Not losing mind quite yet, only partial mind. Okay, let's get that all straightened out. All these loosey-goosey threads, but I think they look kind of cool. So about half an inch on. We can always do some trimming if I didn't measure exactly, which happens a lot. Okay, there we go. Flip it over. Do the same thing with the, the you who... Okay, so now I know what I need to do. Since I am uh, going to be affixing this permanently, the you who... It, okay... This one, I can, I can sew because it's a middle one. Right. Okay, so this one I'm going to sew. I can use the Yoohoo glue here. But the ones that have the covers that are a little thicker that I'm not going to sew, I'm going to switch to the Fabrifix glue because it's going to give us a much stronger hold. Okay, let me just get back down there. Okay. All right. Glue, glue. All right, let's do this. Okay, here's my page. And I'm just going to turn it over. I don't know. It's just easier to sew this way. Go in here. I've got the number one on. Go in about a quarter. You got to make sure you're about at the right spot. Okay, so I'm about a quarter inch in. A couple little back stitches. Okay, and now we're going. And you can feel where the edge is with your fingers through the fabric. Just make sure you sew it. Don't throw sew through anything metal. Make sure there's no staples in there of any kind. All right, there we go. And we're we're off that one. Release your needle and eh, 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 eh. okay. And now you can, this is a good time to come in here for the trim. Okay, there. You're a little long there. That's not too bad. I'll just leave that a little extended. So we have the tube. See, we have a tube. It's not totally attached to the um, papers. Just like we have a tube for the one with the back cover. Okay, we have a tube. Yeah, that's what you want. 
So those two are going to go like that. And now we're just going to come home and complete the mission with this one. Okay. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Okay, my dog is nowhere to be found because um, my husband is cooking in the kitchen and I apparently come second to food. Yeah, I know my place. <laughs> okay, now this one. I'm going to come in with the big gun. Fabrifix. Fabrifix. Clear silicone glue. Fabric to fabric, paper to paper, fabric to paper. Great glue. I love it. Used it for years. It's very reliable, very strong, and uh, it will give a good hold here. Okay. So I did, I had placed it in an uh, Sugar Bell's icing piping bottle. Can't see that. Hang on. I put, put it in a Sugar Bell's icing piping bottle. These are also available in my Amazon shop if you're looking for them. Uh, but they make it uh, very nice to get the glue stream back out. If you're having trouble opening and closing this after you've loaded it because it glued together, you can usually get this top part off and reload through that by, whoops, no, dropping everything here sticking this in that hole and squeezing, and that'll refill it pretty easily. So no big deal. Oozing out the top now, oozing out the top now. Okay, so got that. Let's go ahead, and this is my front cover, so that goes on the front. Just thinking here out loud. Gotta say these things to yourself as a journal maker. Am I, is, my, is this my front cover? Am I looking at the front of my book? What am I doing for gosh sakes? Why are things running amok? Is everything upside down? Did I glue the wrong side? It happens. It happens all the time. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing here. This is me with the Sugar Bell icing piping bottle with the metal tip, which makes it a thinner glue stream. That's why I put it in here because um, you don't need that much, but you need enough. So but again, putting about half an inch on and lining it up. Okay, and then that's good. Might need to shave a little off the top here. And if you do a little, you can always re-ruffle these by pulling a little few extra threadies. That makes a nice re-ruffle. We like our ruffles, don't we? Yeah, we do. All right. Ruffling is not mandatory. No, 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 no. I'm just going to, since this is the cover, I'm just going to run along the edge of this just to secure that down. I have the, the structure down, but now I need to glue the, the flapper. Got to glue your flappers down in life. You don't want to be overly flapping about. That would be quite, quite disastrous <laughs> in certain circumstances. Ah. All right. I flapped with the best of them. Who am I kidding? <laughs> oh. All right. There we go. Probably didn't do that front one very even, but you know, you're probably better at that than I am. I um, think I'm going to shave this off a little bit more just to give it some bottom edging almost to the bottom and then I'll re repull that once everything is dry. Okay so now the big finale we're just going to assemble what we have very easily. So this is our front with the front cover. Okay this is our middle of the sandwich no cover and you can sew down this one easily over at least in my machine over 12 pages with the material no problem. Okay we have that. And then we have the back piece, which has the cover on the back. So I'll put that in the back. Now what you want to do is you want to kind of what I call align everything. And yeah, things may not be perfectly aligned because your one may have a little half inch longer than the other, that kind of thing, but it's going to be okay. Yeah. If you get your um, little tops and your bottoms of your pages together, you can go like this. The thing of going like, like this, that middle one's going to sink in. So if you just keep it in the same place, you just pull it out a little bit so it matches where the other guys are, it's going to be okay. Yeah. So get them. They don't have to be exactly exact, but pretty darn close will serve your purpose as well. And then I would clip these. If you have these little clippers or you don't, just grab a pin. Um, but these little clippers, oh, if I, I think these little clippers will come in handy. These little guys... Yeah, they're, they're for sewing. Pe sewing people know about these things. Um, they hold your stuff together without pinning. It's kind of, kind of a neat little thing they came up with. I love it because uh, if I, there's a pin, I'll stab myself. I don't know about you, but it happens with me all the time. Okay, so there we go. So the most important thing is we want these to stay together when we're sewing because we need to catch each and every one of them. When we go ahead and we sew, we are going to sew. Okay, let's align everything. 
Make sure everything's aligned right. It's not aligned right. Let's 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 do this. Let's arrange everything this way, and then we'll sew. Yeah, let's do that. That's better. Okay, let go like this. It's okay if these are not the same. And uh, now we're going to clip them together. Okay, it's going to be better because our book will look more more uniform. There. Oh, you're so far away. Okay. And there. Okay, now if we don't breathe, this will work. All right, let's take it to the sewing machine. Hold on. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. I am going to do the straight stitch again. Um, I'm going to have to remove these as I go, but I want to be close to, uh, I'm uh, like abutting up against the ridge of the cover. That's going to be my guide. Okay, so I'm going to put the foot down. Put the foot down. Put your foot down. Throw in a couple stitches. Make sure everybody's over as much as possible. But remember, we have that little pin thing there. Okay, so let's remove it as we go. Let's back stitch a little bit. Very good. Now, this isn't difficult on the machine because it is um, just material. Okay. Make sure you keep it abutted against the spine. Okay, now grab it and maybe just, you know, help your machine guide. Make sure you get the front one. And I just figured something out. It's probably one of those things that sewing people could see coming. But, okay, hold on. Let it, we're removing that one. Going. Can you see? I think so. Um, and we're sewing. We're sewing faster. We're sewing faster. Okay. Letting go of the last one. Taking it home, remembering to do our back stitch at the end. Okay, almost there. Don't stop now. Okay, backing up, locking the stitch in so it doesn't come in, and we're off. Okay, then we are. We're going to trim with the scissors because it's getting too tight back there. Okay. There. Okay, here we are. And we have our, our signatures are all sewn together. Now what happened, I discovered, <laughs> I just dawned on me actually, is the, because we're pushing it down, okay, we're turning it backwards and we're pushing it in the machine. Because we push it in the machine and we push it down to sew, the top tunnel is gonna be a little shorter than all the rest. So you're gonna get a little bit of a layered look here because of that, okay? Um, now, you may like that, you may not like that, but if you don't like that, you could come along, you could totally come along with another piece of material and just glue it on here all the way up and down. Let's see what that looks like. All right, let's see, what do I got? Oh, this is pretty, something very different. Uh, maybe glue this on here, back in front. Let's try that. Here's the rip side, let's do the rip side. Oh, creating on the fly, creating on the fly, not knowing what we're doing, but we're creating on the fly. I think I'm going to do maybe four inches, maybe three might be tight. I don't know. Let's, let's cut four just to be sure, because we can always cut more. Okay. And we can reveal all that or not. We can re reveal a little bit of it or not. Let's see. We'll reveal maybe a little bit of it. How about that? Or should we cover the whole thing? It's actually kind of pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of like that even better. Um, let's just cover the whole darn thing. Let's see what happens. Okay. I'm just going to glue it on. Yep. So here's the front. Here's the back. Okay, let me give you a demonstration of the book and how it works. So we have this. And then we have all these beautiful pages for you to play with. Write on. Do whatever you like. This is the first signature. Give a little extra hoo house that need to be removed. This is between the first and the second signature. Okay. Oh, let me pick you. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then first and second signature. And then we have all these glorious pages to write on. Another 12 pages. Second and third signature. And then we have the back end all the way to the cover. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Um, I'm not the greatest seamstress, so extra, uh, you know, proficient seamstresses will do a much better job at this part. But if you're like me and it doesn't come out that way, let's just try covering the whole enchilada and see what happens. Let's see if that's wide enough. Let me see. Put that on there. Flip it over. Yep, it's long enough, wide enough. 
Okay, so I can go exactly half. All right, so I did this four. These were three. This is four inches wide. I had to measure. Um, okay, let's get the seriously industrial strength glue that we all know and love, Fabrifix. Yeah. Okay. Not sponsored, just like the glue. Okay. All right. Ta -da -ta -da. Ta -da. Just put a bunch of glue down, glue down. I'm going to use the finger tool smoosh technique so that um, I don't get too many glue globs that ooze through the fabric because it's a white sheer, more um, like a white cotton. It might show a little bit more than the darker ones. Okay. Doing that there and that. Ah, we can go a little further actually, but let's just try that. Okay, we'll do that there. Now that's already gluing on that. Now I can actually wrap that right around. That can actually go right around and become part of the spine. Look, we're actually making a really cool spine out of this. This is, this is, this is awesome actually. I like this. Okay, so this is going to come over and if it's going to be, whoops, gluing out the back. Now it's a little wider. We don't have to have it that wide, but we'll just, we will. Um, okay, let's put a bunch of glue down here because we know we're going to need it. Okay, let's put some glue on there and then let's come over here. Now let's just put the glue here. Oh, that really smells good, honey. You can smell onions frying. Doesn't onions, I mean, onions frying, it just smells good. There's just, it doesn't even matter. There's like no food cooking, it's just onions. And they're like, oh my God, it's gonna be so good. Whatever it is. <laughs> uh, there we go, that and garlic, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we're just gonna fold this over and I'm, I'm actually taking up the slack. See, there's slack and I'm wrapping it around. So I'm making it like a little chunky monkey sort of um, spiny thing, yeah. It's a chunky monkey spiny thing we're making. Yeah, this is kind of cool. I probably could have gone narrower here. Let me try. Let me try. Okay, I'll try. I could actually glue it back like that. That would be cute too. And then I wouldn't have to cut it. That would be nice. All right, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, since we're at this stage of the game, let's just glue this bit all along here. And glue it back upon itself from whence it came. And we won't have to cut it. Okay. There we go. All right. Low stress crafting. We're just doing some low stress crafting. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just pretty darn good. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. So let's trim these little yippers up. And these are great scissors for that. If you don't know about these, these are the Fiskar easy action, I think they're called, but they're great if you have, uh, you know, if your hands get tired or arthritis or anything like that. Very easy to work. You'll see a lot of crafters use them because they are amazing. Amazing. Okay. And they're very precise. They're like little nipper scissors, little um, fussy cutting style scissors. Yeah. Really good for that. Okay. Let's get in here and nip. Don't nip self. Void self at all cost. Okay, there we go. Oh, how pretty. Isn't that pretty? Okay, we didn't, we didn't glue this edge down. Let's get back here and finish the job, Pam. I think this is actually really a cool spine. Um, and it did put a lot of full-size pages together without folding. No muss, no fuss. Okay, a little fuss because, you know, I was learning on the fly there. But um, uh, it's working. It's working. Let's get this a little narrower. Okay, focus so you can see. Boop, okay. All right, let's do this. Let's glue her home. Let's glue her home and Bob's your uncle. Here we go. Coming down the post. Yep. And sliding in home. Okay, there we go. Might want to do finger smoosh. Okay, there we go. Uh-huh. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, isn't that cool? It's like a notebook for school. Hi, I'm here to go to school. I'm ready for class. I've got my, uh, my handmade notebook. And uh, what? Did you just come in from the Little House on the Prairie? Yes, I live out on the prairie, and this is my book. Uh, we make everything at home, including our books. <laughs> All right, so a little more of that off. Okay. And a little more trimming. Now you know how the little edges need to be extra trim. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see better. Okay, extra trimming. You could use a fabric uh, uh, wheel here as well, the rotary cutter. Um, maybe a little tricky. It might be easier with this. Okay, top and then the bottom. Oh, kind of like get straight would be good. I blame it on my glasses. Yeah. 
not bad almost so that's the basic gist of it nothing too difficult and um like i said you could staple instead how much we got time um let me see if we could try a staple one let's try a small version hold on wait let me show you this one and how it functions does the spine truly function yes the spine functions okay so is it as easy as it was before you came along with that goofy addition of the wraparound spine yes it's as easy as it was before with strings glued to fingers all sorts of glue still have everything functioning as so desired there you go you can take full sheets and combine them into one book i think that looks pretty i like that and uh why is that oh uh, that's <laughs> Maybe I'll put the other side of that on. I just think that's pretty, these 1914 uh, thingies. And I took this scissor. This is a Fiskar. No, it's not. It's like a knockoff version of a ripple cut. And I just ran around. And I didn't, I didn't, I could have torn it, but I just, I had these here and it's cardstock. So I thought, oh, let me just do this and around here. And again, this is from the handwritten. No, no, lying. This is from the Diaries Digi Kit. I'll put the link like in, I'll try to put all these links. Remember the links, Pam. Remember the links. Whoop. Just cut a straight line, Pam. Cut a straight line. Okay. Okay. I'll cut down there too much because it's it's kind of weird. These scissors, not the greatest. Okay, but we will ink it just for fun because I think it'll look cute. And well, well, let's let's do a little inking in the brown. See how that goes. We might want to do a little pink or something. Might put a little bow on here. So, you know, I just this is like a I don't know. I'm getting that pretty girly sort of feeling. Uh, you know, shabby sort of farmhouse, rustic, weathered, worn, Victorian kind of stuff. There. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. I like that. All right, so let's put that there. And I think I want to, I don't know, I'm just feeling kind of goofy and crazy today. Where's the pink dauber? Sorry for the arm. Okay, here we go. This is worn lipstick. And the brown was walnut stain. Okay. Just just blushing it, giving it a little blush every now and then. Yeah, just a little, every now and then. There, I think that, that serves it well. There we go. Yeah, very nice. Okay, let's glue that puppy down. I'm going to use the Fabrifix glue for that. You could use any glue here will work. Um, a nice art, art glitter glue, the white, uh, good white glue is nice. Regular white glue will also work. Just make sure you get your edge as well. Two, two, two. Okay, and then let's place her down somewhere in the middle. Trying for middle. Does it look like middle? Eh, pretty good. All right. And you could do some more stamping and things like that all over. It would be very cool. Okay, we'll do that. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm getting sidetracked. It happens all the time. Looking for a flower. A little stamp flower. I've got about a million. This is crazy. <laughs> all right, let me find one. Hang on. Okay, this is kind of pretty. I thought, let's, let's, let's try this one. Oop try some pink. I don't know. Oh, that wasn't very good. Okay, that's all right. Okay. Okay. Okay, there we go. There's something over here. Okay, that, you never know. I just keep going, you know, and uh, back it up a little bit so you can see. And Maybe you want to ink around the edge. Just giving you ideas of how you can decorate these after. That's the brown. Yeah, thank goodness. Oh, I thought it was the pink. Just amping up the edges a little bit. You could even put metal corners on that. This is really pretty. I'm starting to really like this. I'm starting to really like it. I really like it. I really like it. I do, I do, I do. I and mean, even ink the, uh, just these just a little bit. Yeah, this is totally up to you. This is, I like that worn look. And since I do have some marks, already on here. I'm just going with the, uh, okay, you want to look weathered? We're going to look weathered. That's right. We are going to look weathered. None of this not looking weathered stuff. No, we're going to make it look like it was all intentional. Try that there. Just 
Some simple ones floating in the air. It would be nice if I moved that. Some hanging off. It's always a good idea. A little bit there. Okay. And let me show you closer so you can see. So it's just a nice little light design with some markings on the back and then on the front. There we go. So um, let us, oh, we're already at 40 minutes. You know what? If I, I do a stapler one, I will, um, no, I better, I better show something. Hold on. Okay, we are going, we're going big and we're going home. Okay, so I just grabbed three piles of 12 papers and I am going to make a journal not sewing. Okay, let's see if I can do this. All right, um, we're going to staple these. Let me grab the stapler. Okay, I have a regular swing line stapler, nothing fancy, and I am stapling. You can, you can do a bunch of staples, doesn't matter because we're going to cover it. I'll probably run out of staples. Okay, one signature done. Here's Pam stapling paper. This is how I staple. No special skills involved. Any office job will have trained you well for this. Does anybody staple anymore, like in office jobs? Is there any paper anymore in office jobs? I know my, my husband with his business, he went completely paperless. Yeah, it was shocking to me as the paper lover that I am. We had words, mm -hmm. uh, but actually I ended up uh, grabbing a bunch of his uh, business paper because they no longer used it. And it was nice letterhead style paper, Nabaru. Yep, I was in there. So if you ever come across businesses that are going paperless, get in there and say, so, all that extra paper you have, do you have any purpose for it? I could turn it into wonderful things. Okay, so we have this, we have this, and we have this. Okay, so let's get our strips of fabric. Okay, so I have magically made three pieces of fabric that are all three inches wide and just a little bit long, taller than my uh, journal. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and attach these with Fabrifix glue. Okay, and I'm just going to run basically along the staple line. Okay, putting about half an inch on. I'm going to cover the holes. Yeah, because these have holes. So let's cover the holes. Let's go to the back and we're going to cover all those staples and the holes. Let's just do that. Okay. There we go. All right, let's put one aside. Number two, you're up. Okay, I'm here, I'm ready. Ready to rock and roll, let's do this, Pam. Down the, where the staples and the holes are. Might have to do some uh, touch up gluing in there. That's okay, we can do that. We can touch up glue with the best of them. Most thing is just to get it straight-ish. Okay, turn it over. We're gonna make our little fabric tube. Gotta love the tube. So many things you can do with it. I'd probably even put a, um, like a chopstick or something down there and make some kind of cool spine out of that. We'll do that another day. You know, you know, we have to enjoy the process that we're in. Be in the now, be in the now. All right, there's number two, looking dandy cute already. And then number three is right here. What, where'd number three go? Hang on, what, three, what? Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, here we go. And, down, 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 back up. And we're gluing, gluing down, sticking a little bit up on the top and the bottom. That's okay, because we can trim it after. And now we're coming down the home stretch. And then there's just the one last big finale. All right, so about half an inch on, leaving a little tube. Uh, you don't really need the little tube as much because, yeah, you probably don't even need the little tube at all. I'm just thinking, you probably don't need the little tube with this design. That's okay though, we have the little tube and it's already there. But I think even if you wrap them snugly, snugly, if you wrapped them snugly, this concept of putting one big, well, now how would you attach them though? No, no, it won't work that way. Okay, so we're gonna have to do the original process. Okay, okay, so let's align them and then let's trim. Fabric scissors, where's the fabric scissors? We have found you, you are close, you are our friend. Okay, so we are aligned, we have aligned our pages at the top. Pages at the side, pages at the bottom. Okay, now we're just going to trim, trim de dim That was easy. Holding everything together, if you want to, you can clip this, flipping it over so it's just easier to see. 
All right, there we go. All right, so most important thing is they're all aligned together at this end, this end. The, pay, the side you flip from, that's what you want together. Okay, let's just lock those puppies in place. You're not going anywhere. Nope. All right, so now the big thing is how do we get these together? And there's a multitude of ways that we can do that. The way I showed you on my last video was I punched three holes and then I did the three hole pamphlet stitch, which I'll link down below so you can see that process. But I thought maybe we'd do it a little differently this time just for fun. Okay, the most important thing here to realize is that when you're looking down, you need to go through all three loops, all three tunnels in order to secure them together, correct? Many ways you could do that. You could slow stitch your way, you could blanket stitch your way. Um, and I think what we're going to do, this is an easy way, uh, because I don't like fumbling with sharp needles. I'm going to use this little darning yarn needle, which has a soft end. See, ow, 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 it doesn't hurt at all. Nope, nothing. Um, soft end and very easy to thread, friendly for me. And I think I'm going to put maybe five holes with my crocodile to big bite. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the, the middle one, which is one eighth. Okay. So not all the way to the left, not all the way to the right, but it's the middle one, which is one eighth. Okay. I'm going to eyeball where the hole is going. You want to see this? Okay. I'll show you. Okay. Here is me punching through the three. See the, the little ones come down. Can you see it? What, where are you? See, it's right. It's right here. There. Watch that little hole. See how it gets filled by that? That's what you want to aim for. Okay, so you do one at the bottom, and maybe one in the middle. Now you can feel where the holes are. I can't feel anything right now because it's all over the place. We'll, we'll just do this too. A little guess. <laughs> all right, three. And then I'm going to put maybe one halfway through each. You could measure these out. I'm going for that rustic homemade look, I say. And I'm just guessing. That looks pretty good right there. All right. And now we have five holes. That was easy. And uh, I just grabbed some pretty green thread. Let me reorient. Okay. And I think this is going to be plenty. Just some, cro what is this? Needle point, crochet, thread, tech for, check for integrity. You could use any kind of embroidery floss would be pretty. And um, you can maybe even use multiple colors. That would be very pretty. You can do that with a fat needle. See, there's a reason. See, I actually I put a knot in here and I can still get, I can still thread. Why? Because it's this giant gaping hole of uh, Jonah the whale here ready to receive anything. I jam through it. Okay, let's try it. Let's try two. Let's see what, what, what in earth is going on down here? How on earth did you get this? Oh, I left the drawer open. Okay, I get it. Oh. Bad mama, bad, bad mama. Okay, here we go. Here's another thread. Uh-huh. What? What's that you say? Oh, it's okay, mom. I got other pieces. I, I was uh, gathering things you left on the floor, mom. It's okay, I got you covered. Thank you, sunshine. I do appreciate that. And I don't want you to swallow any of that stuff, so. It's like never a dull moment with the puppy, you know what I mean? Always looking over your shoulder. What are they doing? If they're too quiet for too long, what are they up to? You know, it's just like a little kid, a little toddler, but it's so worth it. So worth it. So many smiles and cuddles and little cutie faces. And all right, bragging about how I can thread this thing. Can't get it through. Okay, let's see, wait. Going that way. Pay attention, get in there. Okay. Ah, okay, now we have two threads. Let's see if I can get these tangled. Probably, probably. All right, I think I have enough. Let's thread this baby and take her home. All right. Mm -hmm. we go in. I think we know what we're doing. We have no idea. I've never done a five hole. I always wondered why would anybody bother doing a five hole? Um, that actually wasn't my plan at all. I was just going to, I was going to wrap around. That was, this is the simple version of the five hole. Yes. And going up, go through the holes. I miss you completely. No, I didn't. Okay. Can you see? Is it close enough? Let me go closer. Oh, there. We are right there. Up close and personal where all the action is. Sewing. I'm just doing a little wraparound. So, and pulling snug because I think I want it to be like snug and bunchied. Uh, for the hole. Going for the hole. Got it. Got it. Wrap around. I, I, does anybody know what the stitch is called? It's very basic. Did I miss it completely here? No, it's uh, down here. That's why. It's okay. We got them through all three. Yay. And then I think maybe it'd be a good idea to go back down. Crossing. Just doing the same maneuver. Um, 
and I think it's it's gonna look cute. It'll give us a little binding. A little binding we never knew we had. <laughs> and it will bring everybody together cohesively. This is not hard. Even um, people who don't sew, I think, could sew this because it's a very extremely basic and it, you love this comfy needle. It's not going to run amuck on you. Okay, no amuck running. Love that, love that. Probably should have ended at the top. That would have been better. Then I could hang a little dangly, but I'm at the bottom now. And that's the way it is. So I'm just going to do a little, a little tie off. Something super fancy. This is called a knot. Yes. Left over right, right over left is how it's done in the best of circles. And then I'm going to do a, this is called a boski. We're going to do a little boski. Yep. Put the big finale on here. You could even hang some little bobbly boos, but you know, hey, we only have so much time. Um, yeah, so there we go. We don't need these anymore. Our book is together. And the tighter you pull these, the more this will be all squashed together as one big spine. Now, let's just say you're like, oh yeah, that's that's really great, Pam. Um, I don't like it. I, I think it looks goofy like that. You're, you're like, okay, that's no problem. I, I have something for you, Miss Sassy Pants. Okay, did anybody notice I didn't put a cover on this? Yeah, okay. Well, you could just staple or glue your cover also in place. Ha <laughs> forgot that part. Um, but if you don't, if you're not like totally thrilled by this luscious bunge, like this gorgeous sewing that I did, um, you can just come along at the end and just glue something right over the whole enchilada and we can do that. Let's do that. Okay, we'll just tie, tear that. Got the top, bottom. And let's go for, oh, I don't know, three inches? Sure. Okay, three, four inches. You can, you can see, measure and see what would look best on your journal. So I'm going to cover this completely. I like this. This is kind of cool. All right. All right. And just gluing down. This is the old Fabrifix again. The never fail you Fabrifix glue. Going to glue your fabric. But I'm going to put lots on here because it's going to really grab all these things. Now they're already sewn together. They're not going to come apart. This is just going to secure the bejeebers out of the whole thing. This is very easy, isn't it? Anybody can do this. You don't need uh, fancy tools. You don't need a sewing machine. Um, and let's flip her over. Did we get enough covered? Even if we have a little hangover, the other one looks kind of pretty. So it's okay. But no, you know, actually this is going to do the fold back. This is going to do the fancy fold back of the extras. Yeah. So there we go. We're going to have a little chunker monker spine in there again, which is going to be kind of cool. All right. So let's do that. Let's do that. So actually, let's glue this because this is what's going to be glued down. And I'm going to do the finger smoosh. Probably can undo my bow and I'll just cut it off. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Um, now, see? See, this is where all the extra is. I'm folding everything over. See that? You could, you could fold it just on itself, but I'm going, to, I'm going to take the whole thing and make it a little bit bulkier of a spine there. Just for fun. And for fun. For fun. Okay, there we go. Snuggers. Everything is snuggers. Okay. Why am I always talking like I'm talking to two-year-olds? I don't know. <laughs> I think, and I don't have kids. Uh, probably lost motherly moments or something. I don't know. Hey, I have the dog. What's this? Nothing. This doesn't belong in here at all. I have no idea why that is there. Oh, I think I flipped that up from the floor when Sonny was uh, gathering things. Yes. I had left a drawer open and he started pillaging. Imagine that. Pillage. There we go. Yeah. So we have a completely together journal sans cover, but um, you get the idea. And here, okay, here's the second signature, but you could just easily glue the cover in before we uh, move forward with uh, sewing it all together. And you could, I'm sorry, you could staple the cover on um, and then uh, glue it on as well. So there you go. And hold on. Let's say you're like me and you forgot your cover. Okay, well, this is what I would do to get my cover on. I would decide where I want my cover to go. Okay, so let's measure. Oh, this is, I've just got two of these like hard cardboardy kind of uh, folder separator thingies. And I'm gonna put this on here where I want it to start, maybe there and as long as it needs to be about there. And I come in with my very mighty, my very mighty Pencil. Where are you, pencil of mightiness? Are we recording? Yes. Okay, here, here. Then we're going to cut that. Okay, I'm using my crafting knife. I got rid of one section, so it should be sharper. Measuring, watching the line, aligning, cutting. 
Okay. Oops, went cockeyed. Where is it? Go flush against the ruler, go slow, watch the blade. Going through the second one. Did I get through? Yeah, okay. So when you have a sharp blade, just things go much, much easier in life. My goodness, what, what, what are we all doing working with dull blades? Maybe it's only me. Okay, up here. Um, okay, it's always a good idea to clear the deck before you cut. So your things come out organized and neat and exactly the same size and shape. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. And home stretch here, home stretch. Oh, I can't, where's my line? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, pretty soon I think I'll be the blind crafter. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's one. Ah, two, I think that's good. Yeah, we are good. All right, so let's, let's go and salvage what we did. Okay, so since we just glued this down, we're gonna have an opportunity to sneak in a cover. Now it's not going to go all the way around. It's going to be a soft spine, but it's going to be a hard cover. Um, and we are going to glue it on. That's what we're going to do. Um, where's the glue? Okay, here. Actually, let's, let's glue this. Let's glue this. Why don't we? And I think I'm going to glue. Create a bit of glue. And then I'm going to finger smoosh so we don't have too much bleed through. And then I'm going to line. Okay, put this in the spot you want it and then glue it down. Yeah. Then everything should be dandy. Okay. Wait, any extra glue? Looking good, huh? Yeah, yeah? Okay, let's flip it over. Try not to move it too much now. Don't get all willy-nilly on me. All right, let's lift this up. It's already starting to glue down. We got a few seconds. Mm-hmm. Strong, firm hold, but you do have a few moments of uh, retrievability. And let's say this was just way too glued down. What would I have done? You know, I was like too late. I probably would have glued it on top and then glued another piece of material around to secure that on. But I can still get under here. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to get this baby covered. Because I'm not going to leave you hanging. No way. No way, shape, or form. There's always a way out of stuff. And we'll find it together. No backing down. No, we're going to rise to the challenge and craft our way through it all. Okay. Finger smoosh. Finger smoosh. So I'll be spending the next few hours rolling all this glue off my fingers. Now let's let's get this aligned exactly where we want it. Oh, not, not in far enough? Oh, no. Come on, you're gonna have to give it up. Give it up, give it up. Yeah, just just yield. <laughs> there we go. Okay. More glue. More glue. More glue alert. More glue alert. Okay. There we go. Alright, let's get in there. Do this. Alright, let's put this on where we want it. Making it all nice. Looking at the front cover, aligning. Let's align. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Align it with the front cover. Then you know you're going to be golden. All right, I glue it down. Make sure it all the way. Tidy. Mm hmm. There we go. A little extra string. It happens. Glue balls, they happen. And there we go. We have a nice, covered, beautiful. Oh, well, maybe we need to do something about that. What can we do there? Oh, I'll just tell you what we can do. We're just going to keep going. I'm never, I'm never stopping this video. We're just going. We're going to do a marathon. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, what do you do when you don't know what to do with that? Well, you come along and do this. You come along with another piece of material, and you just keep going. You just keep materializing spinage. <laughs> we're going to do something like that, and that's going to cure all the evils. Mm -hmm. Yep, let's do this. All right. Do 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 do. Booby do. Da 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 da. Ya da da. Okay, getting it started. I need more glue than that. Just not not a whole lot because this is um, more decorative than functional. Okay, let us. I want it. I want my little ruffled beginning. I probably want my little ruffled end too, don't I? I probably should make it sure it's all nice and smooth. Smoothie pants under there. As I wasn't very good at that, but I'll give you better in the future, I promise. For time's sake, we just carry on, carrying on. And we can ruffle that after. But there, that handled that little Goomba, right? No problem there. It's amazing what a little piece of fabric will do. That's why I always say, take a look at your clothes. Take a look at the old linens and things like that that you come across. 
Um, now everything else is functional. See, now we also have the fabric design here and we also have the fabric design here. So it's not unheard of to have a fabric design here. That's all I'm saying, okay? It, it, it's okay. And back here, ooh, what? oh no, that's where we glued it down. Right, so that one has to stay there. But this is kind of weirdy woo. So maybe we'll want to put a little piece of fabric there too. So we'll finish off with the same one and uh, we'll call it a day. Yeah. So maybe you made one of these with me. I hope so. Were you like holding your breath going, oh, oh my God, well, she's gone off the rails. Doesn't have a plan. Look at this. She's trying to create on the fly yet again. Disaster will ensue at any moment. I know. I know. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> but uh, no, actually, I hope you had fun and I hope you're open to the experimental process as we go. And I know some of you have said you like to see how I create when I'm doing stuff. Well, this is pretty much how it happens. I have a plan in mind and then nothing goes as planned and then I work from there. And just say, okay, well, if that didn't work, what could work? What could work? What other supply could I use? What other approach could I get this to come together and be functional and uh, something fun to play with? And uh, if I think I find anything that's even halfway fun to play with or might be useful for you guys, I'm going to share it with you guys because, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, all right, there we go. Oh yeah, you want to go down a little bit more there. And I would say we have just wrapped this baby up. What's that? Sunshine? Are you talking to me? Is it time to wrap up? Mom, it's time to wrap up. Yes, you've done a lot of crafting today. No, I haven't barely gotten started. You know that. Don't be fibbing to the people. I know, Mom. I'm just kidding. All right. There. Yeah. Yeah. Now you could glue this entire back page down. And I, I may do that just for, you know, completion's sake. Um, but the first one works well all the way through. So there you go. I hope you had fun with these books that we made. And I hope they inspire you to grab some full-size sheets, as I have been asked that a lot. How do you make a journal out of full-size sheets? And this is just one of the many ways to make a journal out of a full-size sheet. So I hope that uh, you had some fun and inspiration here. And let me find little Mr. Snuffleupagus. Come here. Come here, Sunny Bunny. All right, you want to say hello to everybody? What is on your face? I have a green thing on my face. I don't know what it is. I think it's part of the felt. All right, can you remove it, Mom, please? Okay, thank you. Ready for my camera shot. Okay, everybody, here we go. If you find value here, please like, subscribe, and share. Click the notification bell. Mom's got an awesome... Okay, first of all, all the links are in the drop-down box below. Okay, for Amazon store, favorite tools and supplies, vintage digital kits, which are housed in the, her Etsy shop, and um, monthly free emailed newsletter with all sorts of really cool stuff, including a free digital image. And um, videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, Eastern time, 7 a.m. Podcasts, which are audio and new material, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they're free to listen to, too. Um, she, Mom can be found on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Facebook group. Mom, I think you've got glue on your fingers. Can you please watch that? And um, come and join our Facebook group. We're having so much fun over there, making fun things and doing weekly and monthly challenges. So everybody from me and Sunny and everybody else uh, so inclined. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Hope you're having fun. Make sure you get your good dose of fun today. You deserve it.